La base esencial de mi trabajo the essential base of my work is to be contemporary based on a tradition. I've always been talking about my origins, where I come from, how proud I am to know where I come from. The rest of the journey has just been additions to that starting point. Carlos is a very intense man with everything he does, with everything he does, with his relationships, with me, with the kids. He's very passionate, and of course with his art. He gets a lot of his ideas and everything from experiences I've had and experiences from my brother and my sister have had, and he soaks up everything as a family that we've done. I kind of see myself in every painting that he's ever made. Even if it's little or even if it's big, I know that he puts like a piece of every relationship that he has with my brothers and I in them. He has one that's called the Empingated, and it's kind of crazy, you know, things are going everywhere. And I, I, I personally think I'm the craziest one in the family, you know, outside of my dad, but he'll never admit it. For me, the definition of art is when my grandmother on my father's side, or my dad, would start singing peasant songs. And the level of improvisation my dad had would be something luminous. The way he could create images with every phrase he would articulate about any given situation. Carlos's work is not something that is local. It doesn't pertain to one single country, even if in his paintings there are elements of Cuba, his birthplace. His work speaks to a more basic human uh, condition and human desire. Everyone can relate to jealousy or passion or love or lust or uh, feelings of longing. In such a, you know, a beautiful way, he's able to really show us a mirror. Uh, even though I'm not from Cuba, I understand the condition that he's talking about. Even in Washington, D.C. It is absolutely something that can be shown in Berlin, New York, or Johannesburg. I grew up in the country in Germany. We had roosters. My grandfather had lots of chickens and turkeys and geese and so on. It was just the, the kind of country environment that Carlos grew up in. And so I think there is something really deep that connected us. And I think this idea of, of what he called a guajiro, the farmer, and allow that almost invisible subject to be the narrator of his entire uh, storyline, for me is incredible because it's like recalibrating history. You know, the political life had, had consumed him when he first came here what was happening to Cuba, you know, his home that he loved. But when he got to this, this later work, um, I think he sublimated it into something else, something deeper, more profound. And I think that he's able to translate that with a vocabulary that he has developed over the years that expresses it to not just Cubans, although he expresses it as a Cuban, but he expresses it to, the, to a wider audience. If you look at his paintings, they are like structures, they are like buildings. Nothing falls from the painting. He is very schooled in traditional academic methods. He takes his time. He's very, very careful. Every line, every color application, Every layer is very, very precise. By watching my grandmother cooking, the way she would prepare it, the way she would cook it and the result. Then I would see my aunt preparing the same beans and they would not taste the same. My grandmother had given them the time, perfect love when doing a dessert or seeing my grandfather polishing his shoes with what affection he would polish his shoes. And many times I would ask him about the way he took care of his clothes. And he would tell me, it fits me, my son. They help me walk. They cover my feet so they don't hurt me. That type of process molded the love or the pleasure of doing what I do. One of the things that I've noticed is his experimentation with different materials. As he becomes more confident in his style. He allowed himself to, to push the boundary of what painting is by doing different kind of uh, experimental processes.
project, uh, from tapestry, uh, intervention in metal, ceramic work. So the, the kind of efflorescence of artistic talent that Carlos Luna represents is just wonderful across all of these different mediums. It's as if, you know, uh, he wants to pick up a, a trombone or he wants to put on his tap shoes. There's not enough expression available to him. He's bringing together many complex forces that have made him who he is as a person. A person who is saying to death in this painting, I'm here in life, come and get me if you can. But I'm here, and while I'm here, I'll do the best I can. When you're struggling to make imagery happen, when you're trying to make a mark with an artist and you want that mark to be the artist that he loves, that he wants, that he was envisioning, even if it changes in the process, which is the most important thing, it's still somewhere it was inside the artist waiting to come out and, and we just try to pull that out. It's really remarkable to have an artist change so much over the years and still be true to his uh, inner, inner self and his inner passion. Al final, yo, At the end, yo I go into my studio to have fun. I think I am very privileged to be able to live doing what I choose to do. I wake up every morning and I go to my studio to play. It's very stimulating. You will always be able to recognize Carlos because he lives his spirit always. I just love him. His family and his art and his life is a total work of art. It all goes together and uh, you can't take any part away. I mean, you can't take Claudia away, for instance. You know, she is part of it. The children are part of it. Uh, his dogs are part of it. You know, he used to have roosters. They were part of it. It's all part of the totality that is Carlos Luna.